Well, good morning. It is a good morning. It's wonderful that you're here. Before you just get all settled at the end of, of, of my remarks today, there's going to be, we're going to have communion, the Lord's Supper, and you are, if you're a believer in Christ or a seeker of Christ, you're welcome to join with us in that, and so you might want to get a, a cup, and somebody bring me one, I, I forgot mine, uh, um, but we're, we're going to segue into that, and, and uh, so just, just be prepared for that. Speaking of that time element, I was just told a cartoon of a young man, young woman walking out of church. And the guy just stretches and says, wow, I feel so refreshed and renewed. It's the best two hour nap I've had in a while. <laughs> I didn't think it was funny. Uh, but, 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 but the cowboy joke actually comes from a, a, a little cowgirl last week told me this one. She said, she said, do you know why horses are so afraid of falling down? Because they're afraid they can't giddy up. <laughs> and I want to add for that young lady that in about 100 years you'll understand this one. That my giddy up and go got up and went. <laughs> it is so good to see you this morning. It's so good to be together. And, and just for the record, last week I had a sermon titled An Abundance of Rain. <laughs> I'm just saying, the problem of it is, we got an inch here, and where I live, we got pretty much nothing. But I'm still believing that there will be an abundance of rain sooner or later, and God is good to us, amen? So, so I thought that was relevant last week. I'm 100% sure what I'm going to teach about today is relevant. Let me ask you. You remember your first kiss? You don't need to talk about it. You, 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 you remember your first day in school? I do. I was, uh, my parents, who are otherwise fairly bright people, um, decided I was a big kid and, and I should just maybe skip kindergarten and go right to first grade. And so I was seven when I started first grade. and also understood that I had the belief system that I could choose whether or not to go to school it was up to me. And so I went to school and it was a half day the first day and, and it wasn't, it was a little long, I felt, uh, but recess was good and, and wasn't bad and the bus ride wasn't bad and, and it, it wasn't bad, half day. And so when they came back, I was asked how I liked it and I said, yeah, it, it is okay. Not, not my favorite thing to do, but it's okay. It's, it's, it's okay, and I think I'll go back tomorrow. And they probably turned their heads and smiled, and I was under the delusion that I still had an option. And, and so the next morning I went to school, and that was a full long day, and they gave books and assignments and stuff, and it wasn't long into that day till I was firmly decided, nope, this is it. <laughs> I have maxed out on my educational career, and, and I'm, I'm pretty much done. And uh, so when I came home that night, I announced in clear terms, well, been there, done that, not doing that again. I'm not going back. Nope, I'm done. At which time I came into a rude awakening. <laughs> and for the next number of years, oh, I made it. I made it, I made it. I'm telling you kids, you can make it, hang in there. It's, it's a test of perseverance, you can make it, you can get there from here. You, 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 you can make it, and actually some people like it, and I don't get that, but, but I'm just saying. You, you remember your first date? Hmm. You, you, for some of you, you remember getting married? That was a bigger change than you thought it was gonna be. <laughs> if, if your parents, you remember your first child? Oh boy. And you figured out that two plus one equals six? <laughs> but, but wait for it. You remember your second child? And, and you found out that three plus one equals, I don't know, depends on that second child, really. And, and, and don't, you, you remember that? You remember your first job? You, you remember the first time you got fired? You remember, so what am I talking about? I'm talking about transitions, and we all have them. 
there are transitions in life. Some of, some of us, you remember when you retired? You remember which time you retired? <laughs> you remember, I, I had plans. <laughs> it's not working out. <laughs> and, and it's good. It's all good. You, 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 you remember stuff like that? You, you, you remember when you hear certain news. You remember when you hear... And, and I've talked up to this point mostly about sort of happy transitions. Oh, I did mention getting fired and a few things like that, but oh, some of you remember some transitions that are really unhappy too. And you lose a loved one. They die. Oh my. And another and another. And sometimes that piles up on you and, and, and you lose functions and you lose, oh, oh boy. Life is full of transitions. Right? So we want to look at one of those today, a massive story of a massive transition in the Bible, and we want to pull out from that some principles for us that we can apply to our transitions. Now, each of us has have similar transitions and unique transitions. So I can hit some of the similar transitions because I'm talking to hundreds of people, but you'll have to extrapolate those out to your unique transitions. That make sense? So get your head engaged, get, get, get busy, because, because these principles will apply, and we're going to try to focus on these principles. Let's go to the scripture. We're going way back into the Old Testament book, in this Old Testament story, in Joshua chapter 1, and I want to tell you what pulled me into this story. Watch this. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun. Now Joshua had been sort of, the, he was the, the commander of the army. He was the, obviously the successor. He was next in line. By the way, the word Joshua is, is very similar to the name Jesus in Hebrew, Yeshua. Uh, it is Jehovah with us, the God who is with us. Uh, Jesus is the God who saves us. So, so his, his meaning of his name, he was in some way typical of that. So it's Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid. Moses, here's, here's God speaking to him. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites. Let me give you some background here. This is around Mount Nebo and it is in what would currently be the country of Jordan. It is a little uh, to the southwest of Amman, Jordan, and a little west, a little northeast of the Dead Sea, if that gets you any geographical location. And they're about ready to get back into the Promised Land. They have been absent. This story occurs about 3,500 years ago. It's as relevant as today. They're, they're, they're lobbing rockets and stuff around here today, but, but I'm just saying it, they're, they're about ready to go back in. Uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob had lived there and, and have been out now for about 500 years. Uh, they've been in captivity in Egypt for 400 of those years, they've, so they've been gone a little 440, whatever, in, in, in the wilderness wandering and Egypt time, and they're about ready to go back into Israel, but here's what caught my attention. God speaks to Joshua and he says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now I'd read this probably several times, but I remember one morning reading it and thinking, well, that's cold. I mean, I don't want to be irreverent, but I'm thinking, excuse me? This is Moses. This is Moses who was played by Charlton Heston. <laughs> now, if you're young, that means absolutely nothing for you. Think Brad Pitt or something. I'm just telling you, he was something. This is Moses. This is Moses who's, Moses who's one of the great leaders of all times. This is Moses who writes the first five books of the Bible for us. This is Moses who met face to face with God and twice God gave him stone tablets that were inscribed because he broke the first set. And, 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 and I mean, this is the man. This is a guy who miraculously saved as a baby. This is a guy who dared to defy Pharaoh, who was, the, who was the greatest leader on the planet Earth at that point, and, said, and negotiated with him. And this is the guy who, who, by his staff, did amazing, miraculous miracles, including when Pharaoh mobilized his army, he just held his staff over the Red Sea, and it goes, try that sometime. You ain't Moses. 
I'm just telling you, this is, this is the guy, this is Moses who leads them out here. This is, this is, we study him for leadership. He's one of the great leaders, one of the great managers, one of the great delegators. He's the first in all of human printed history where, where he masters the art of delegation. He, he's a military leader. He's, he's amazing. He's a writer. He's, he's a poet. He's awesome. This is Moses. And you come up and say, Moses, my servant is dead. It's a little cold. So, <laughs> when you're that irreverent with God, you should do some study. Because God is not cold. And so I backed up and dawned on me that this is the first chapter of the book of Joshua, but Joshua, the book of Joshua, comes after the book of Deuteronomy. And in this case in the Bible, it is indeed chronological, and it is indeed like just next step. And so I should go back to the book of Deuteronomy and focus on the past. And in transition, let's talk about the past. And I won't spend, let's go to that slide. Let's talk about the past, let's go to the next one. And that is, first of all, this idea, Moses was this great leader. He was this gigantic figure. I think I've spent enough time there, so let's go to the next one. But he also had faults and sins. When you go to the past, it is okay to recognize that there were some, there are things about the past that were absolutely astonishing, amazing, beautiful, great, excellent, but rarely is your past perfect. Let me rephrase that. Your past wasn't perfect. Let's just say it that way. Most of you are very aware of that. If you're not aware of that, look harder because it wasn't that good. I'm just telling you, it was great. Moses was a great leader. He was an astounding leader. He was an awesome guy, but he did have some faults and sins. In fact, one of the things that brings us to this point in the story is the fact that on one occasion, he got angry and impatient with God and stepped out of line and, and proved to be an embarrassment. And God is saying, so you're not going to be the guy that takes this vast group of people, two million plus, over into Israel you're, their promised land. You're not going to be the guy. Joshua's going to do that. You, you're going to go to heaven. We know that he went to heaven. There's, there's an incident in the New Testament where he comes back, and I mean, we, we know certifiably that he went to heaven. But there are going to be consequences for this. He had faults and sins. It's okay to recognize that about your past, too, by the way. If you have some hero, if you have somebody that really was awesome, really was fantastic, and it's okay to say it was good, it wasn't perfect. Okay, so they're identifying, they're getting realistic about their past. In fact, let's go to the, let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. I just want to read you a little bit about this. Let me just tell you this. I've I just gotten a conversation with a guy this last week. It was an inspiring conversation. He was telling me the ways that he would prefer to die. And I'm thinking, you know, can we talk about something else for a while? I mean, okay, so you got your wish list. We both know whatever. It's not up to you. And secondly, but, but, but let me just go on record to say Moses' way of dying, is that's, that's what I want. First of all, he lived to be 120. Second, the Bible will say his eyes weren't dim nor his strength diminished. Third, on the last day of his life, he went mountain climbing with God. And God took him and God had his funeral. I'm all in. I'm all in. That's, that's the way I want to go. I doubt it. But anyway, Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab as the Lord had said. God had said to him, by the way, Moses, I want you to go with me up on a mountain. One of us is coming back, and it won't be you. So God was up front about saying, this is your last hike. Look around. Enjoy it. This is your last hike. He buried him in Moab in the valley opposite Beth Peor. Watch this. But to this day, no one knows where his grave is. Moses was 120 years old when he died. Let's go to the, yet his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. The Israelites grieved for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days until the time of weeping and mourning was over. Now let's go to the slide. First of all, I find a significance in this story that we don't know where his grave is. That's unusual. We know where other people's tombs and graves are, right? I mean, that's a, that's a deal. Uh, but Moses, who was this gigantic figure, who's this astonishing leader, 
We still don't know for sure where his grave is. And it's on purpose because you understand God was transitioning the people of Israel away from this land, not their permanent land, over to this land, which was going to be their permanent home. And he didn't want them always traveling back to visit Moses' grave, honoring it, making a shrine about it, worshiping around there. Does that make sense? What's that say to you about transition? It's good to have memories about transition. It's good. They kept Moses the first five books of the Bible. They memorized them. Uh, uh, many of the Israelites did. They knew the truths. They knew the principles. They knew the goodness. They recognized the faults and the sins. But they didn't idolize the person. I would hope, for instance, I, I, would, I would hope in years to come that some of you have fond memories about me for a while. I'm not naive enough to think that that will last for long. But whatever that is... I'm pretty sure nobody's going to build a shrine to you or me. Hello? I'm, I'm sorry. I, don't, I hope that's not an insult to you, but I doubt it. I doubt that somebody's going to put a cathedral up over where you're buried. I just doubt it. I'm pretty sure that about me. Like, I'm really sure that about me. And, and one of the things I want to say in transition is that you need to recognize the, fa the past, honor the past, and get past the past. Don't build a shrine. Don't build a place of worship on the past. Hello? In fact, let's go to the next slide. And that is, this is key. Remember, I said I was drawn into this passage because, well, that's cold. As it turns out, not cold at all. They had mourned him specifically, intentionally for 30 days. Let's talk about that. Hebrew culture is much more expressive than an old white cowboy. Hebrew culture is emotional and emotive. Hebrew culture, they would have wailed. They would have poured ashes on their heads. <laughs> I've never done that on purpose, accidentally, but not on purpose. They would have ripped their garments to show that they were disheveled and grief-stricken and had these ashes and they would have wailed and cried and it was messy, it was loud, it was emotive and they did this for 30 days and I've just talked about it for about three minutes and I'm tired of it already. Are, are you with me? There's a point to this, though. There's a real point to this and that is that sometimes those of us, especially those of us who do the stiff upper lip thing, those of us who tend to not be emotional or emotive about things, those of us who like to think in some of our moments that we're a bit tough, sometimes we do not adequately grieve or mourn difficult transitions and so have difficulty getting over them. I'm not trying to play psychologist here. I'm, I'm trying to stick with scripture, which is my lane. And I'm just saying that to transition from Moses' leadership to Joshua's leadership, from wandering in the wilderness to crossing the Jordan over in the Promised Land, to transition, they first camped out and mourned for 30 days. Now, I've mentioned a couple times that I'm a bit impatient. I'm just telling you, if I was Joshua on the third day, I would have said, yeah, whatever, that was good. Um, yep, he was a good guy, but he, you know, he's gone. He's not coming back. You know that, right? So let's move. It's time. 30 days, they just camped out and mourned. 30 days, they just camped out and mourned. So let me just pause right here a moment to ask you, what is it that you need to take time to mourn? I mean, intentionally say, I've learned after some deep trauma to say, I need to schedule a day or two alone with God and be flexible on that. And I just need to go hang out with God and grieve through that. And let God bring healing to me. Now, I've never done 30 days. Like I say, I'm impatient. I'm pretty sure God can get it done in a day. Um, but... <laughs> I'm just real, my problems, not your problems. I'm just saying, the, 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 this is, the idea was that we need to be intentional about this morning, 30 days. So that's the past. They, they, they didn't have a place to go back to, and they intentionally, proactively mourned it. Let's go to the future. Let's go. So in the future, we're going to pick up again in that Joshua passage and read back in Joshua chapter 1. Let's go to that scripture. 
God is now saying to him, Moses is dead. Moses, your servant, is dead. As it turns out, that's not cold because you've mourned for 30 days. We're ready to move on. We've, we've given honor and, and we've given due respect and we've, we've, we've been there, done that. Now, I will give you, what's this? God is saying to Joshua, I will give you every place where you set your foot. <laughs> By the way, farmers and ranchers, don't take this literally. Some of you are going to go for a hike this afternoon and say, I've really wanted that land for quite a while. I'm just going to walk on it. No, 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 no. <laughs> there are laws about that stuff, people. But understand, they're coming back into this country, the promised land, and it has, there's a vacuum has sucked in all kinds of tribes who are going to defend their tribal areas, etc. Still going on. And, and, and God is saying to Joshua, you step on it, you own it. I'll get back to that in a minute. Watch this. I give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. Let's go. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of... Oh, what's that? No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Here's... Watch this. This is, this is huge. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Oh... The blessings of the past, the, the, the help of the past, the strength of the past. I'll be with you. Watch this. Jesus picks up on this promise. Understand this? Watch, watch these words. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Just inhale that for a minute. Because Jesus himself said that to you. I will never leave you or forsake you. I'm not going to name names. I'm not even going to look at people. But I know there are people right here in this room and many people listening who, who struggle with rejection and abandonment because you've been abandoned and rejected. Embrace this from the sovereign Lord Jesus who says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Not going to happen. And when God says never, he understands that in ways that you and I can't even understand that. When I hear never, I tend to think lifetime. When God says never, he means never forever. Understand that. God is saying, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Never will it happen. And I just want to say to you, the more, the more this has occurred to you, and the more you feel this, the more I would cling to this promise. I, 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 I might put it on your screensaver. I might put it somewhere. I, I'd remind myself of this a lot to say, this is the promise that comes from God who says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Next, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or the left. Oh, oh, oh. I'll get back. That you may be successful wherever you go. Next one, please. Keep this book of the law always in your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. <laughs> I love this about his leadership. Now he's on my page. They've more than 30 days. They've had their time. Now he says three days from now, you'll cross the Jordan. By the way, they've been attempting this for 40 years. And, Jordan, and, and, and when Joshua comes into leadership, he's saying, get stuff ready, get your act together, get packed, because three days from now we're going over. Oh, 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 there's a problem, because it's spring and the Jordan is at a flood time. Three days from now we're going over. Oh, oh, oh we got vast flocks and herds and, and we've been staked out here. It's going to take us long enough. Three days from now we're going over, he says. It's time to move. It's time to go on. I'll, I'll get back, but... And we're going to go in and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you for your own. Amen. Go to the next slide. And that is the future. And here's the number one thing to, to remember. God is with you.
God is with you. God is with you. God is with you. Um, sometimes future gets uncertain, right? Sometimes stuff that you thought was there gets pulled out from under you. Sometimes things, you, you know, we can look at this in all, all sorts of areas. Some things that we, we were, were locked in on, we thought were going to happen, and all of a sudden it's just, that's not the plan anymore. That's not going to happen. Things, things change, and that can be physically, financially, politically, whatever. You, you can relationally, obviously, all that. It's just, that's, that's, that's not an option anymore. That's not going to happen anymore. Here's an unwavering foundational truth. God's with you. This is why you can say, you put your foot on it, you own it. Because you're such a superstar? No, because I'm with you. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I'll never leave you or forsake you. So you walk on it, you got it, you own it. Because I am with you. I, the Lord your God, am commanding you, and I am with you. Let's go to the next slide. And that is, because God is with you, you can expect extraordinary help. He got in. I mean, the first city they went in is Jericho, which is an absolutely fortified city. It's tremendous walls. It's, it's in military terms, it's impregnable. It's, 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 it's really, this is amazing. This is astonishing. And then God says, watch this. <laughs> and God has the most bizarre military ideas in the world. I mean, and, and this is a test of Joshua's early leadership. I mean, yeah, they've crossed the River Jordan, and that was amazing. But, 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 but God says, I want you to just walk around the city once a day for seven days and I want you to not say a word not make a sound just walk around it who does that and what is that and then God says on the seventh day now I want you to get up early and I want you to walk around the whole city for seven times on the seventh day and at the end of that seventh time give the signal and I want you to blow trumpets and I want everybody to shout with a great roar and they did that and the city walls just just imploded and they took the place over that's extraordinary help. See what I'm saying? Uh, that, that's a plan nobody has had before or since. It, this doesn't make sense. But God says, just watch this. You walk around it, I'll give it to you. Remember I said to you, when you put your feet on it, I'll give it to you. Just walk around this city. Just walk around this city. Just, and talk about morale boosting. Talk about, talk about picking up cred. Because you know the Israelites, I, if it's me on day one, I'm thinking, this is the dumbest plan <laughs> I've ever heard of. On day three, I'm guaranteed, I'm thinking, oh boy, where's Moses? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Moses had some out there ideas, but this is just stupid. <laughs> on day six, I'm thinking, really seriously. And I'm tired on day seven because I've walked around it seven times and now, yep, there they are. I've seen those rocks before, got them memorized. And then when they implode, I'm like, hallelujah, I'll follow Joshua anywhere, anytime. Are you with me? This is the man because the Lord is with you and I will give you extraordinary help. Here's what I want to say to you, ladies and gentlemen. You're in transition. You've gone through. Some of you some of you had the rug jerked out from under you even recently, and I'm really, really sorry about that. I truly am sorry about that. I've got to tell you God is with you, and I've got to tell you there are good days ahead. Let's go to the next one. He says, be careful to obey. By the way, when you're in transition, when you're in moving, those are the times when you can get your own ideas. Or he's saying you get into the land of Israel, and Jericho does fall down, and you think, I'm some. I got this. We got it. He said, no, 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 no. Be careful to obey. Be careful to obey. Be careful to obey. Understand, I'm with you. But be cautious in these times that you pay attention. Let's go to the next one. And then he says it this way. Be strong and very courageous. God says it to, to Joshua three times. At the end of Joshua chapter 1, the people say it back to Joshua. So for the fourth time, be strong and courageous. I'm catching a hint that he needs to hear this message. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. You got that? And God says that to me and God says that to you. Be strong and courageous. You're in the middle of turmoil. You're in the middle of transition. You're in the middle of going to something new. Old things that you thought you knew had been pulled away from you. What you thought you could stand on, that's no longer there. That person you thought you could trust, you can no longer trust. I'm, 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 I'm helping you through this. And God is saying, remember, I'm with you. Remember, you can expect extraordinary help from me. And remember this, 
You need to be strong and courageous. You need to be strong and courageous because I am with you. Because I have commanded you to be strong and courageous. Because you believe that I have your future and I am there. Be strong and very courageous. And because the cause is amazing. And God bless them. God used them extraordinarily well. Be strong and very courageous. Would somebody bring a communion cup up to me, please? I'm, I'm going to need to leave this in a minute, and I don't have one. Um, um, thanks, sir. I got one. Appreciate it. You, you can make up for it. This that we're going to do in a minute, I'm going to segue now. It's pretty obvious. It's not a stretch is a symbol of the fact that God is with you. God is with you. Nothing magical about this. There's something holy about this. And, and the fact of it is this. God is with you. You can be strong and courageous. He's got you. He is the sovereign Lord God. He is the God who says, I am from everlasting to everlasting. I'm really sorry about what you're going through right now. But oh wow, if you could see what I got out for you in the future. And that doesn't mean from here to there doesn't have some bumps in the road. They had some bumps in the road. But I got good things for you in the future. If God is with you, ladies and gentlemen, if God is with you, oh, you can expect really, really good things. Let me pray over this, and I'm going to ask you at the end, we'll repeat the Lord's Prayer together, but first, Holy Father, thanks for not leaving us ever. We receive your promise today that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you, Lord God. Now help us to be strong and very courageous. Help us today, Lord, as we take these elements that symbolize your body and your blood that we receive you and understand because of you we can be strong and courageous. I bless these and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now if you'll peel that lid off of the little piece of bread there. This bread represents the body of Christ which was broken for you. Eat this with thanksgiving and remember that Christ died for you. I think you know where to go next. Peel that off the juice. The juice. This juice represents the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for the forgiveness of sins. Can I go off script here a minute? Hallelujah. I'm forgiven. My sins are forgiven. They are washed away. Not most of them, not the big majority of them, all of them are washed away. My record has been expunged before the judge of all the ages. I'm not guilty of anything. <laughs> Deal with that. That's better news than you've had so far today. That's awesome. And when I receive him, oh, wow. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. And he will forgive me and take me to heaven. This represents the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you. Drink this in remembrance that Christ died for you and be grateful. And now please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. 
Amen. Amen. God be with you. God is with you. He will never